gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. Have you got a Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving. Hello again, it is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post and Aaron Evernham here on a Tuesday. So, uh, how are you? I'm good. Very good. Good. Did I see pictures of you in a fire suit? I did. You know, it was a little bit scary to put it back on to make sure it still fit. I had to make okay. sure, like, no one could be around me. When so, it sure still fit. It, it fit. Right. I mean, it might have been a little tight, but it fit. And it fit. Yeah. So, what were you doing? Uh, there was a hill climb in my hometown, Wilbraham, Mass., um, that actually started, I think, in 1908. But my whole childhood, I never knew anything about this because it was years that they didn't do it. Right. So uh, a family friend actually had started it back up a few years ago, a man named George Holman, and uh, someone who actually lived across the street from me growing up, and my father knew, and he has a bunch of old cars, so he invited us to come up for the weekend and, and for me to drive. So I was a little hesitant because it's been a while since I've been behind the wheel. Sure. And then um, I drove a 1929 Stutz Pikes Peak Special. Oh, wow. That was like all original, uh, straight line aid. It was it was really neat. It was a fun event, and I got to see you know a lot of my family, friends, people from high school I hadn't seen in, in years. So it was fun. Pretty neat, that's for sure. Yeah. You got the competitive juices going a little bit, did you? Uh, well, I I didn't plan to. I had well, a really, you didn't plan to. I, know. I had a really good plan that we were just going to go there and do this as an exhibition, and um, you know, like a run or two into it, they start announcing the top five and times, and I was like. Start, and I saw Ray looking at me, and he's giving me the old, don't you dare, like, don't get competitive. And then, you know, you start knocking your time down a little yeah. bit, and then Ray starts working on it. Cause I well, because he doesn't want to get competitive <laughs> either, so he starts yeah. making adjustments exactly. on the car. And then he's like, you know, you need a deep stage, you get a running start that'll give you a little bit of time. When right you're not the being competitive. Exactly. Right. And he, so, yes, by the end of the day, Wayne Carini from Chasing Classic Cars, uh, he was there, and he challenged me on the microphone to, like, this is our last run, because our times were pretty similar. And he's like, this is this is all or nothing. And I'm betting Aaron. That she, I'm going to beat her. He's like, you better all cheer for her because she's going to need it. And um, I did beat him by a second and a half. So I came to the bottom of the hill that, and he's out of his car bowing to me. So it was fun. It That's was awesome. Yeah, it, it was a really neat event. And it was it was um, kind of neat to drive a car like that. It was a right hand drive and a left hand shift. So oh wow, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It was a little interesting. You know, it's funny because when going up the hill, I was like focused on getting my shifts right, sure. even though I wasn't being competitive. Being competitive, of course. Yes, no, you yes. would never do that. But then when I'd get to the top of the hill and you'd, you'd have to break and then you know take your slow way down the hill, there's a few times I went to grab the shifter over here. Over here, yeah. <laughs> I'm like oh, yeah, oh wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Over there, yeah. So no, I was glad I went. It was a great event to be a part of. That is so cool. Yeah, I love seeing. Um, I loved. I I just saw some of the pictures and stuff yeah. on your social channels, and it looked really really cool so and it was there were a lot of young kids out there too which was kind of neat to neat. see them into yeah. the car culture they had a big car show they had over 300 cars at a car show down the street and you know i'm so used to the car world around the nascar world and the sprint car world it was kind of neat to be in the northeast and, and remember how big it is there and i got to see our friend dick bergeron he was there ah, he came Dr. and dick visited yeah that's cool yep. yeah. we spent some time with him so that yeah, is awesome it was really neat. good times good yep. times that's great no awesome stuff that's for sure now um, you had a big graduation this weekend yeah daughter my youngest one graduated from college Ooh, so uh, yeah um big festivities big doings uh we got her through the graduation ceremony, we got Dad through the ceremony. All right, um, we had a few sketchy you, moments, but you, that's all right. Well, it's like eyes are sweating. Well, or something. stupid. Someone was cutting onions or something in that stupid. Uh, <laughs> it was arena. the pollen. The pollen. Yeah, the pollen. Yeah, that's at the pollen. I'll go with that. Um, yeah, um, it, it was just simply awesome. That's cool. I mean, it really was. She'd be very proud. Uh, yeah, yeah. She. It was. It was a fun weekend. It was really cool and uh, very proud, Dad, and uh, really, really good. So um, here we go. The next chapter. Yep. We don't know what the next chapter is, but the <laughs> next chapter. So uh, 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 the reality of my next chapter is there's an empty nest. Uh, we've been flirting with it with international trips by one daughter and college for the other daughter. Uh, we're getting ready. We've been the flirtation period is getting yeah. ready to be over. Um, we're getting ready to go full blown empty nest. And um, I don't I, I there's portions. Uh, it's natural. Yeah. And I'm happy about it. And I love it. Uh, but there's portions of it that I'm really not yeah, all that keen I'm on. I'm sure. Um, but it's good. So it's really good. Yeah, it was a fun weekend. And um, 
Fun, fun weekend, which leads us to a fun show. Um, we're going to talk to Dave Blaney and Chad Kemenow today. So the way the weekend was, and with this being such a family event, I was just kind of like, I'm not going to really pay much attention to racing. Yeah. I'm, you know, if, you know, if I glance up at the TV and, and we had a party for the Sunday, so I saw that little bit of the cup race and stuff like that. But, um, you know, but it was just, I'm not going to focus on it. But Saturday night. Things have all settled down. I'm sitting there. I'm unwinding. I'm like, I wonder what's on Dirt Vision and uh, Sharon Speedway. Yeah. And the announcer says, we'll be right back with the 410 feature. I'm like, well, now I guess I could dial this up. And I'm glad I did because, um, and we're going to talk to Dave Blaney. You're, when you watch Dave Blaney win in 410 Sprint Car hey Amen, your life is better. Yeah, it just absolutely. is. It's just so cool. So we're going to talk, this is like a throwback show. We're going to talk to Dave Blaney and uh, then Chad Kemenhaw, who uh, we wanted to get, we, w- one of the things we talk about during the off season is to make sure that we talk to some of our Hall of Fame inductees mm-hmm. leading up to the June induction. And here we are in May and we've, we've talked to uh, Joey Saldana. Yeah. Um, and I think we've talked to one other one, but it's like, okay, wait a minute, let's get this. So we're talking to Dave Blaney and Chad Kemenaw today. It's a little old school sprint car I know, I like it. It is really cool. It is really cool. Of course, Chad is a father of a young sprint car racer as well, so we're going to talk about that. But let's get into our Hefner Racing Product Hot Topics. World of Outlaw, NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars, the uh, Williams Grove, um, they were there for the Morgan Cup. Friday night, Brad Sweet, the winner. Aaron, remember back in the day, Back in the day yeah. when Brad Sweet struggled at Williams, it was not long ago. But yes, I mean, no, it was not long ago. Yeah. He went fifty-three starts at Williams Grove. Summer of last year, the Summer Nationals, yeah. he won it. He went. This was his third start since then. When he won again at Williams, Grove. yeah. Um, the Big Cat, eighty-third career win, fourth of the season. He's now the point leader. Um, I. I I'm anxious at some point to talk to Brad about this because, and I think it was you and I, when we talked about his conquering Knoxville and yeah. the amount of studying he did mm-hmm. and everything from footwork to mind to, to body to, to eyes to what you're looking at to what you're looking for. I'll be curious. It probably is a similar path to Williams Grove. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, of course, he gets out of the Once car. It clicks. And he gets yeah. out of the car and wants to hear the noise. and. There wasn't many boo birds, though. That was the thing. I think he was disappointed there wasn't many boo birds. But it's the, the problem with Brad is it's tough not to respect him. Yeah. You know, just and, yeah, and he's seeing and seeing shots when shots was doing it, he'd come in there and whoop them every time. So you'd get sick of them. Yeah. You're not sick of they're not sick of Brad yet. And when Gravel yeah. won, he dumped Stevie. He dumped Stevie. He gets the boo birds. He gets the boo birds. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, David uh, or, um, or Brad hasn't earned the, the dislike. Go up there and win in the summer or take the national open do and both. batten yeah. down the hatches, batten down the hatches, Brad. You're going to get the reaction that you want from Pennsylvania. Uh, Saturday night rain. Um, All-star circuit of champions. Friday night, Jacksonville. Hunter Schoenberg, 100%, picked up the win. Saturday night at Wilmot, it was Tyler Courtney. Um, I want to give a shout-out Chris Wyndham, yeah. second both nights. Uh, he's driving that Lane Motorsports car. We got to know when we were doing the road shows up at Port Royal of uh, the Lane folks. Of course, they're pimping all kinds of booze. I mean, they're just they're 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 selling this and that hard limit, hard cider, and I mean they're doing it all. And so we got to know them through going out into the campgrounds with them. The Lane folks are just great, and so it was neat to see them partner with Chris Windham. And yeah. boy, two second place runs. It's yeah. not gonna be long till Big Daddy's standing on the front stretch waving a checkered yeah. flag. Um, he's got that. They, they've got that thing rolling, and this is a brand new pairing this year. And mm-hmm. so this early now. Brian Kemenaw is consulting on this. Oh, that always that helps. That doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. That helps. Brian, um, I've talked to, uh, I talked to Brian about this at um, Millbridge, and he's just geeked up. Uh, the Lanes have a really, that's a really good team. Mm-hmm. And he obviously is familiar with Chris Wyndham, but in the few, they were, he went up on a race, um, but he's not traveling all the time. Uh, but he said, it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be real good. And when Brian Kemenow said it's going to be good, yeah, you're, you're usually pretty, pretty, accurate. Pretty, pretty accurate with it. West Coast fun, the Pita Miffy Classic at King Speedway <laughs> in Hanford. Um, Corey Day swept Friday night. They had a 410, yeah. non-sanctioned 410 race and, and a 360 race. 
He swept that. Saturday, he won the Sprint Car Challenge Tour 360 race. Uh, he finished second in the 410 race. Um, he's had six. Corey Day has had six 410 starts. Three wins, three second place finishes. That's pretty good. Whew, that's rolling. <laughs> now, the guy that kept him from victory lane with the $11,000 Peter Murphy Classic is another guy that's rolling, Dominic Selzy. Yeah. Uh, I know you were busy in in Massachusetts. Uh, yes, I didn't get to see it. You didn't get to see it or the post race. Oh, celebration. I saw it on on Twitter. The shoey. I mean, who voluntarily? Mc... Well, okay, does so this. you're James McFadden. Yeah. And you do the shoey, which is in itself. But you look at every four ton sprint car driver in America. Which is the one that you think you can convince to do a shoey? Well, obviously Dominic, Dominic Selzy. Selzy. But why would he willingly do this when it's? I mean. Dominic Selzy, and he just won 11 grand. <gasps> exactly. Yeah. There's I... one picture out there, and one of the trophy queens' look on her face is Horrified. spectacular. Yeah, it's spectacular. It's just like the look on her. I she's mean... smiling. She's smiling, but those eyes are like. It is gross. Like, well, yeah, just, no, it is. Just... It really Because you know there's like a lot of sweat. It's warm oh, in that clothes. Exactly. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing of it is, see, James has figured out, because you busted James on this. Yeah, he, he's he, figured he out. He figured it. it out. You fake it. Yeah. I bet you Dom. I bet you Dom took a big old swallow. Too. Yeah. I bet oh, you Dom, I'm sure. There's I no... bet you Dom got a. Got and I'm a... pretty sure James next time is going to be a little more careful because he because definitely. he got busted. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was like all it. running down his face. Yeah. Like, he didn't really actually. Yeah, yeah, really. But I bet you Dominic. I bet you Dominic's like, uh, I bet you Dominic was all in. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't be surprised. With the shoey. Yes, exactly. Uh, horrible idea. Uh, mm-hmm. This is not a tradition, although I did ask Ashley, because Ashley, our, our co-host, she does our TV program. She's uh, hinting around about the the um, the uh, pageant world again, a little bit. Oh, boy. And I said, now bring the shoey to the pageant world. Now, you've got something yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Might be a little bit better out of a heel. Ugh, all of no. it's gross. Yes, exactly. So, um, Dominic sells these gross. No, wait a minute. She didn't say that. <laughs> it's like, uh, settle down out there in California. Um, good stuff out there. The Peter Murphy classic looked like a great weekend out there. And um, imagine that a yeah. great weekend. Peter Murphy's involved a great weekend. That's yeah. kind of redundant. I do like Dominic's commentary on social media about our NASCAR shenanigans lately too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not a fan of Ross Chastain. Not a fan of Ross Chastain. No. Nor as much of the sprint car world. Yeah. I don't think Ross needs to like uh, head to Attica or Sharon probably or not. probably in Williams Grove. Uh, Williams Grove or Knoxville or Eldora. Probably uh, Ross, you might want to stay away from those tracks for for a couple of weeks, anyhow. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, it is. It is. It's crazy, crazy. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Attic and Fremont, it was a Skylar G sweep. Speaking of a big weekend, Anthony Macri won the World mm. of Outlaws at Lincoln, and he won at Sealands Grove. That was quite the finish at, at Lincoln on last yeah, week. Yeah, That was quite I the finish last that. lap. Uh, and last week on the show, we had Brandon Spithaller, and he uh, did well. Sunday night, he won at Knox. And uh, we mentioned this, and we're going to talk to the Buckeye Bullet. Saturday night, Sharon, it was Dave Blaney. So there you have it, our Hefner Racing product hot topics. Hefner Racing, their website, hrpracing.com. Easy to shop the entire line of Hefner Racing products, hrpracing.com from desktop or right on your phone. And hey, first time orders, use promo code MRN for checkout and get 10% off your first order. Hefner Racing products, www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. The Buckeye Bullet, Dave Blaney joins us next. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Johnny Shots and the rest of the World of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one interviews with the top drivers as well as grassroots racers. Pick up a copy of Dirt Empire Magazine today at select tractor supply stores or other area retailers. Or get your subscription today at DirtEmpireMagazine.com. So I shared this in the opening, uh, popped down on 
on Saturday night after all the day's festivities and find out that Sharon is getting ready to run their 410 feature on Dirt Vision. I said, well, this ought to be good. And uh, it was good, especially for one Dave Blaney. Yeah. Up on the fence, wheeling, rolling that car. And he joins us now on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Hello, Dave. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, guys. How are you? We are well, Dave. 2023, you're one for one. You're batting a thousand. Um, had to feel good to be back behind the wheel of a race car and stand on the front stretch when it was over as well. Yeah. Heck yeah, on both. Um, a little late getting my first start of the year <laughs> in May, but um, had to get a, a, a night in before the the outlaw race this weekend. So, and it, it went okay. Car ran well. We um, got the got the money spot to start in drew the number two pill so uh that helped yeah you know i only ran a few races at sharon but the time that i ran i think your brother got the got to start in the pool like what's the deal with you with blaney's <laughs> at, at sharon i feel like it's rigged a little bit <laughs> yeah i'm sorry you feel like that <laughs> um hey everybody was standing there watching there was plenty of people spectating to make sure that one was you know up and up so yeah. yeah i was one of the last ones to draw and it was just hanging right there oh, nothing wrong with that yeah. nothing wrong with that <laughs> Dave, you found yourself you found yourself on a track that was very, very wide, and you were getting all of it. You were running up on top. Um, it looked like the track was 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 well prepared. Everything was good. Um, did you did you kind of sense you were going to need to go up there at the start? Is that kind of where you figured you were going to be racing? Um, yeah, probably. They they do a little bit of track prep before the race, and they put a little water on the bottom lane and water on the top lane. And, um, I was starting outside row, and um, I thought the top would be fastest for a while, and it was. And then um, I moved around a little bit in lap traffic, but just felt like I could keep rolling better um, up the racetrack. My car wasn't great, um, slow and way down, and, and it wasn't uh, running forward real fast. So I just kind of kept it, kept it going as fast as I could around the top and hope nobody drove by. <laughs> Um, Dave, I love the surface at Sharon on most nights. It gets really wide and slick and right up on the fence where you were running it, or in some nights you can make the bottom work. You know, how important is it for, for you as the part of the track to have a, a surface like that? You have the world of outlaws coming in next week and it, it just produces such great racing. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, that's what we think it's all about. And, and it's, our track's a little weird where it's, it's really dry to start the night and the mm -hmm. speeds are, most of the time it's dry speeds are slow and the heat races are slow, but when the sun goes down and um, we can get a little water on it, it'll get, you know, shiny and black all the way across and not much dust, if any. And, and really last week was um, maybe the closest I've seen all three lanes as far as seemed like the speed in all three lanes is about the same. There was no dominant lane for mm -hmm. sure. So that's a, that's a good, a good thing going slow, but you know, when the racing is good and, and close, that's all you can ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It was a, it was a great race. Right. It was a fun race to watch. And, you know, obviously you were flogging lap traffic. Dylan Sisney was coming from, uh, coming in a hurry. Um, and, and he was able to make some moves. And, and again, from a spectator sport, just watch a spectator perspective, sitting on, uh, watching dirt vision. Um, it was, it was entertaining as all get out really, really good stuff. Um, so how are things, uh, at the racetrack, everything looking good with the, uh, with the big show coming up this Saturday, the, uh, your concessions all good to go. Everything, all the all the important stuff, all buttoned up and ready to go. Yeah, that's a weird thing for me. I yeah, um, I got my race car, so I'm more focused on it than I am the track. And unfortunately, um, <clears throat> those guys, but but they will be his wife and everybody up there. They've got it, and they've been doing it a long time up there, and they're, they're ready to go. We've got you know that law sprint race this Saturday, but then the next weekend is a three day World of Outlaw late model race, big late model race. So two big ones back to back. Uh, so they got lots of work to do. Yeah. Dave, you know, running just kind of part-time, you said it was your first race this past weekend. Um, talk about what it's like to to run, and now you're going to go back and run with the Outlaws, but to not run a full schedule and try to keep up with those guys. Uh, yeah, it's almost <laughs> impossible to keep up with them. I, I have a little home track advantage, maybe knowing the track, and mm -hmm. and I've got laps, lots of laps here with my car, but, you know, the odds are about half a percent right that I could win the race this week. So you just go try to uh, be competitive as you can and, and maybe things go your way. But yeah, it's, it's fun to race with those guys. The guys that do it every night are so good. 
And uh, it's fun to watch. Even if you're just watching it, it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Well, that half a percent back in 2021, you won the race with that half a percent. Do you? Yeah. And you you actually got out of the car then, and you had talked about how good you felt your speed was in the car. How I mean, with one race under your belt, how do you feel about your speed and, and the performance of the car just from this past Saturday night? Uh, same thing, half a percent. That's a <laughs> half a percent chance. I'm, um, I'm going to the that was so. It was more of a fluke the first time. I feel like almost, but um, no. I just, I mean, it won't. I guess I could say it won't surprise me if I win, but it won't surprise me if I miss the race either. I think it could go either yeah. way. Yeah, Dave. With that being said, you know you've been around sprint cars for a long time and followed them. How neat is it to see how much our sport has grown in the fans and the TV or the streaming packages and in the competition level? How neat is it to you for you to see that growth? Oh yeah, it's incredible to me. It's um, yeah, the way the whole thing's grown, and, and um, I mean, really, you got to give the World of Outlaw credit for keeping this thing going. You know, Dirt Vision coming out there and putting it in front of so many people, and it's um, you know, it's grown from other streaming companies and and uh, other races, but <clears throat> yeah, it's huge, and it's in front of so many people. Like I said, and and um, you know, the, the racers nowadays. You know, they race for a lot of money. These things cost a lot of money to race, but boy, the the um, amount they can race for is, is pretty darn high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, they're running for whatever it is tonight, thirty grand tonight, or whatever it is over at um, yeah. over uh, with the high limit series. So it's crazy. It really, truly yeah. is. Dave, when yeah. you look yeah. at it, and I, and I and I and I know you've got great people running Sharon Speedway. Um, the balance between big events, you've got the World of Outlaws, the World of Outlaw Late Models coming in, you've got weekly action. What's the challenge from a tracks operator perspective to find that right mix of, of weekly shows and, uh, and, and, and big events? Um, I think it depends on the facility somewhat. Our, sure. our facility is not very big as far as the amount of people we hold, the amount of people we can park and and get into place so we can't go crazy on big races but um a certain amount of them do well but, but then you know you want your local racing to excel the same way your your uh, racers to have a good track to race at fair money to race for and, and the fans that have a good experience so it's tough to make all sides <clears throat> happy on <laughs> all occasions but um all you can do is um be mindful of all the you know the people involved and try to keep everybody um, pulling the same direction and happy. You guys are in a unique area there in western Pennsylvania. You're not central Pennsylvania. You're not Ohio. And I think it's been interesting to watch the last five years. Uh, of course, Lernerville is the Friday night track, but you guys, Mercer, uh, there's some sun, there's Sunday night track. Tri, uh, Tri County is run on Sunday night. Tri Cities run on Sunday nights. Um, just kind of the state of four ton sprint car racing in Western Pennsylvania. You know, how do you feel it's e evolving here over the over the last five years or so? Um, I don't know. As it's gotten a whole bunch different, um, mm -hmm. it seems like everybody's trying to pay a little more than we used to. The racetracks, but nobody runs like we don't run weekly every week for ten sprint cars. So we. We have a certain amount of races, and then the other tracks, Mercer, uh, Pittsburgh Motor Speedway, Knox, Tri-City, they all fill in. So I think there's a, a decent money race every week in western Pennsylvania, just not at the same, not at the same track. So it's, um, it's not bad. I think there's uh, more opportunities than ever to run for decent money. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's bad. Everybody's kind of sharing the load as far as the racetracks go. Dave, beyond this weekend, where else are we going to see in a sprint car this year? How often, should I say? Mm, I don't know. This Saturday. <laughs> After that, I don't know. Well, my my whole season revolves uh, right around my dad's memorial race at Sharon. Like mm -hmm. that's that's the one I want to be ready for and try to win. And and uh, so after that one, who knows? See what we got left. But uh, um, I can even race some more places here and there. It just depends. Um, how much uh, equipment I got left or if I think I'm going to be good to go for the Lou Blaney night. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Got to focus on that. That is for sure. Well, Dave, like I said, uh, it was fun popping down on the couch and watching you wheel that car on Saturday night. I really enjoyed it. I'm, 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 I love 
our streaming services because a guy in Concord, yeah. North Carolina can watch the watch the sprint car race, and I think that is awesome. Congratulations on the win. Best of luck against the Outlaws this week, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Perfect. Thank you, guys. There we go. The Buckeye Bullet. Dave Blaney joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us when we come back. Chad Kemenaw, the Hall of Famer, he joins us next. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Johnny Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday nights, details at SkagitSpeedway.com. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum's newest exhibit will be our track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway inside the museum's main floor from April 3rd through October 2nd this year. You'll learn about the beginning of Williams Grove Speedway and the evolution of sprint car racing on the East Coast through eight of the iconic big cars and sprint cars that made up the history of Mechanic Birds Pennsylvania's Williams Grove Speedway. Plus, you'll see videos of historic national open sprint car races and other racing events that put Williams Grove on the map. That's the track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway, featured April 3rd through October 2nd at the only museum in the world solely dedicated to sprint car racing, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Oh, boy. Uh, Dave Blaney has ran us off the rails. Ugh. Okay, because we get done, and we say goodbye on the air, and they usually hang up. Well, Dave didn't want to hang up. He wanted to talk some more because he wanted to bust one of us about our long hair. And it wasn't you. He just asked he what just, the status yeah, was. what the status was. Exactly. He's been and busting And whose hair me. was longer. Yeah, and, he... and that sort of thing. And so what has happened in the meantime is normally in that window, we would call Chad Kemenaw. But uh, we didn't talk to Chad Kemenaw because Dave Blaney wanted to bust the stones of one of the hosts. So Dave Blaney runs It was us. pretty funny. It was, pre it was very funny. Um, I, the, yeah, I, I love... The, the Blaney family is like um, racing treasure. Yes. They, they are. And it started with Lou and then Dave and Dale and then Ryan. The Blaney, we, are, we are just, as a, as a motorsports family and community, we're so lucky to have the Blaney's. And, and I guess Dave wants to call and bust me about that or wants to hang out a little bit longer and bust. I guess we'll just do that. So uh, right. go ahead and do it. So, All right. But one thing, one thing can get this thing back right on the rails. We can uh, talk. We can talk. Well, yeah, Aaron, you're 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 kind of you're kind of over there laughing. I mean, now I feel this. like we could really just start off and introduce Chad and ask him his thoughts on your hair. No, I don't think we need to do that <laughs> because he's a Hall of Famer, Aaron, and he's a dad to a racer. We got much more important things to talk to, and he joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Chad Kemenow joins us. Hello, Chad. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, Dave Blaney has ran us off the rails here, so we're going to try to get back on the rails. <laughs> Um, and just try to get back going here. Uh, my gosh. And you don't expect it from Blaney, and yet he does it frequently. Oh, 100% yeah. expect it from Blaney. Absolutely. So, Chad Kamenaugh, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. It was announced back in December, Chad. Uh, I can't imagine what that meant to you to get that call from Bob Baker and have that announcement made. Yeah, I don't think it still seems real. I suppose we're about a couple of weeks couple of weeks away from actually setting in for real but uh absolutely unbelievable and pretty you know beyond honored to be heading that direction chad when you look back at your very successful career what are what are some of the things that are highlights to you are they the championships is it the, some of those runs you had at knoxville what are some things that stand out when you look back at this hall of fame career well, the all-star things are, you know, of course, those are neat, you know, from championships and stuff. But uh, the Knoxville National runs, it's the the second place thing, you know, you, that is neat. But the amount of Todd Timms that I've had there, that uh, that's pretty high on my list. The Manzanita win, you know, the last mm -hmm. one to ever win an outlaw race at Manzanita, that was mm -hmm. pretty special. And um just uh, I don't know I mean just very very lucky I suppose you know to do as what I did as long as I was able to do it and um 
enjoy every level of it from working on them to racing them to running up and down the road probably you know that feeling as well Aaron. <laughs> like sometimes it's like what are you doing but you wouldn't trade it for nothing <laughs> Chad, I think the thing that really stands out and 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 getting to know you just a little bit um is the word family. Okay. A lot of your success, your brother was your crew chief. Your your wife has been such an active part. Your father in law has been such an active part. Your family. What has it meant to you? You talk about running up and down the road. What's it meant to you to 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 have done it for all that time as a family operation? Um, well, I mean, jokingly I can say this. I mean I drove for my wife or wife and father-in-law for what six years, and I'm not divorced, so that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's probably an so, accomplishment you know, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, it, it's really, really neat. I mean, I, of course, you know, the to look back on it and to be close to family as long as I was able to do it and be, you know, fairly successful at doing it was. Um, I uh, still sometimes don't seem real, but, uh, I mean, we did it and had tons of fun. And like I say, you know, I wouldn't trade that stuff for, for nothing. You know, to add to that, Chad, you know, beyond just your family, the racing community, when you look back through your career, you know, I got to spend a little time with you on the road years ago, and you you always had a lot of fun. Like, talk about not just the immediate family, but the community in general and those relationships that you form over the years, traveling with the same people, working with the same people, and how important and how big of a role they play in your life. Yeah, it's, you really, you know, no one really understands it. Like, you know, you, you say do you miss being out on the road? And a lot of times I'll say no, but I miss the people Mm -hmm. because you meet so many different people and from the racers, whether it's, you know, we're all competitors and you still see it today at every level of racing. But when something happens, it's like some big, huge family. And then everybody, you know, next thing you know, you got 13 guys, trying to replace a front end in a race car that I probably drove it in the fence, but everyone forgets that and everyone just chips in. And next thing you know, everyone's helping. So until you actually are out there running up and down the road, night in, night out, you know, and we were able to do it for a long time. And the friendships is probably, that's probably one of the neatest things I'd say is, the, just you, I don't know. You're kind of like I say, you're running up down the road like a who knows, I don't know, like a circus. But at the <laughs> end of it, <laughs> you end up being stuck in a motel for three or four days in a parking lot because it rained, and <laughs> everybody forgets your partner or your you know competitors. And next thing you know, you're cooking steaks and hot dogs on some makeshift grill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't get much better than that. It really Stopping doesn't. at the nearest yeah. Wendy's, right? I have, I've had a few Wendy's over the days. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> if you travel with the Kaminaws, you're stopping at Wendy's. Really? So oh, the yeah, Wendy's, yeah. Is, Wendy's is a Kaminaw thing. It's a yeah, at least thing. it was back yeah. in the day. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. There we go. Uh, I think we all got that from the guy named Hewitt. Yes. That's just what he ate. And I just trickled down and unfortunately it really stuck as you well know Aaron it really stuck <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, a lot of frosties I had a lot of frosties hanging out with you guys that is awesome that is so cool that is so cool you know I, I was looking at your bio and, and Jack Hewitt's one of your heroes and I saw Kenny Jacobs was one of your heroes to get a chance as a back years ago when you first got the chance to race with some of your heroes what what was that like as a as a younger race car driver uh it, pretty unbelievable you know and then you you get tired of you know so i'll use kenny for an example because i got to race with him the most you know to look up to him and then you race with him for the first couple years you think my god what does it take to beat this guy (laughs) you know like he just is he ever going to slow down or am i ever going to get good enough to compete with him night in night out but once you learn how to race with them guys to the day that Steve Kinzer didn't race no more. It was cool every time he's on the racetrack with you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Boy, I just, uh, yep. 
And now you've got your son Creed racing, and you, you know we've been following his career for a little while now. What has that been like to to be uh, in the father role and watching? And I mean, I've got Kate into ponies, and I can tell you that for me, watching is way harder than it was to be behind the wheel or doing something myself. How has that been to to watch his career in, come into his own? Uh, it's hard, like <laughs> nerve wracking. I tell everybody, you know, like I don't. I, I was never a nervous type person, but man, watching Creed or McKenzie when she was in sports, uh, absolute train wreck, <laughs> you know, and then now that he's racing, it's harder because there's so many times that I just want to go, what in the world? <laughs> but I know <laughs> I, I got to watch because he, yeah, he's only 16 years old, but um, it, it's, me and Joey have had a few of these conversations that we just thought it was difficult before. Now we got this brilliant idea to let our kids drive race cars. <laughs> I'm not real sure about all this. Well, I mean, and, and, and we've watched them, and we, we had some pictures we were showing from, from quarter midgets up through some micros and some small stuff, but nine, four, ten starts, so he's climbing the ladder. I mean, how is he How is he progressing? Two top tens. I see you got a top ten at Lernerville and Attica in the last couple of weeks. Um, how How is he doing with it, with all the lessons he's learning along the way? Well, he just got racing 101 at its highest here in the last two weeks because he had a pair of top tens. He's doing a very good job, and then – I always try to tell him there's a lot more lows than highs. And we went to Attica last week in the first lap of the heat race. Uh, maybe the radiator cap was okay. I mean, just absolutely <laughs> destroyed one. <laughs> and, and he gets back to the trailer, and I was like, what do you say? I mean, you know, so then me and Joey are kind of like, oh, my God, you know, that was, that was a big ride. Well, then same place about – almost a repeat replay Reese destroys one in the heat race or in the feature and it's like oh my just God. a bad night for these kids coming up I guess because it was uh, wow. it was an eye opener for Creed that was probably his first he, he's turned the sprint car over in the 305 but no, uh, this one was he, got he earned this one yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely got this one yeah well it's certainly but part he, of the he's sport doing, he's doing real good that's yeah, good. definitely a part of the sport we all have to deal with, and a learning experience. How has it been to um, to watch his progress? And is is he like does he work on the car a lot? And I, I see it's a family affair. I see there's new merch coming out. How has the whole experience been? You know, just all of it, even outside of him driving. Yeah, so like I've always since he's been a little guy. Like I was never that way, and I don't want him to probably. I don't know. I don't know how to say this. Probably the perfect way, but I don't want him to be. Just hold your helmet and think everybody owes you something. Like that's just mm -hmm. not me, and I don't want him to be that way. So he has, he has to work on them. I mean, we got home Friday night. Example being Saturday morning. I woke him up same time I got up and. He helped me unload and strip the crash race car just like I had to do it. So yeah. he's going to learn what I say is, I don't know if it's right way or wrong way. My eyes, it's the right way. He's going to he's gonna know a little bit of something about him. I don't, he don't have to be a mechanic, but I don't want him at the same breath to be totally clueless either about what he's setting in. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned a couple times Joey. Okay, um, and you talked about Joey watching Reese, and we talked about you watching Creed race. Um, you're going into the Hall of Fame with Joey, and when you look at whether it's Joey or the class you're being inducted into, um, just just kind of what 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 additional what additionally does that mean as well, Chad? Oh, it's, it's really neat because being knowing Joey for so many years, of course. Like, just uh, even before I started racing, you know, and his dad racing. So it's almost like since I was a little kid, you just knew the Cell Dana name. So mm -hmm. to go into it with him is really, really cool, just knowing what he's done. And now, like I say, jokingly, you know, here we are. We got two kids doing this, and, you know, the only thing we said on the other night when they both crashed, thank God their moms weren't here because we've probably both been in the doghouse. 
<laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go into this thing, you know, into the Hall of Fame, and um, it's just a real honor to be not only go into it, but like say a guy like Joey that I've known for so long and respected. That makes it probably a little better. I bet. I bet. You got a big group headed out to Knoxville here in a few weeks? Yeah. Yep. We're probably going to take a few people. We're going to try to maybe sneak out next week and let Creed run the 360 if all goes well. But wow. we'll, nice. That's awesome. It can it can change pretty quickly. Well, yeah, as, as, as it did Friday night in that heat race. But you, <laughs> but you have that radiator oh, yeah. cap. You still have that you good got radiator, the radiator cap. cap. You're good to go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I told him we're just going to jack the radiator cap up on this one and drive another one under it because there ain't much left. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, I was so happy in December when I saw your name on the list and when Bob announced that. Congratulations on the accomplishment. We always appreciate the conversations, whether they're here uh, on the phone line or when we catch up with you at the racetrack. If we don't talk to you before, enjoy all the ceremonies and everything. But uh, congratulations again, and thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. And thanks for having me on. There we go. Chad Kemenaw joins us here on the Sage Fruit Outline. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Johnny Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers as well as grassroots racers. Pick up a copy of Dirt Empire Magazine today at select tractor supply stores or other area retailers. Or get your subscription today at DirtEmpireMagazine.com. That National Sprint Car Hall of Fame induction ceremony is coming up on June 3rd. June 3rd out at uh, one sprint car place in Knoxville, Iowa. And uh, what a time that's going to be. A big time, oh, that's for sure. always so much fun. Always great. It really, truly is. Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthdays. Ray Tilly today. Ross Garnett uh, tomorrow. Clarence Hooker Hood. Shirley Keir. Birthday coming up on Thursday. One of the real sweethearts of the sport. WH Bill Vanderwalker, uh, Vanderwater. Pat Sullivan coming up on Friday. Pat, uh, I see Pat just retired from the University of Indiana as a, a professor. Yeah, and I saw he's doing something with USAC. He's doing, see? Something, yeah. Yeah, he's doing yeah. a lot with USAC, and he's More just, with USAC, he's just a wonderful, wonderful yes. person. I, I don't know him that well. Uh, we've had him on the show a couple of times. But I know people like Dylan Welch and Chris Wilner and those guys, and I mean, it's revered. Yes. Like Pat absolutely. Sullivan and uh, Tyler Burnett used to be a producer here, used to do Rip Defense. I mean, revere this guy. Yes. Uh, so Pat Sullivan birthday, um, uh, Paul uh, Weirich, um and uh, Bob Swiker coming up a little bit later on this week. We don't have to wait for racing long, Aaron. It's tonight. Yes. Yes, indeed. It is the High Limit Series 59 strong. Woo! And in our time zone, which helps. Me and out. in our time zone. <laughs> exactly. Selfishly thinking. Yes. Wayne County Speedway. Um, winners so far in the High Limit Series. Gio Selzy picked up the win at Lakeside and Anthony Macri at 34 Raceway. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Where are the outlaws going? They are going to Ohio. Well, Attica and Sharon this weekend, as we know from, from Dave Blaney. And even though he's got a, what, a half a percent chance of. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas. Put some money on Blaney. Oh, he cracks me up. Half a percent yeah. chance. Yeah. And I, I think his assessment yeah, is you accurate. Yeah, actually won two years ago. Yeah. Like, uh, I think his assessment is accurate, though, because as deep and competitive yeah. as the sprint car world is now, it it is you could win the race or not qualify, yeah. and neither would be neither would shock. Yeah, absolutely. But it would be you a great story. You can't be far off if you're Of course, off. the last time when he took it off from Sheldon on the last lap, they that about was, burned that joint down. They did. Um, really cool stuff. Um, your old stomping grounds for the All Stars, yeah. Dundee Outlaw Speedway, Fonda and Wheat Sport. Gosh, I love Fonda. You like Fonda? Do yeah, you, you never I mean all those river? racetracks, but Fonda yeah. is just such a neat. You place. You never put it in the river, the Mohawk. No, river. I was a little concerned I would one time, but I didn't. Yeah, never put no, it in the Mohawk no. River down there. Yeah, <laughs> I've been to Fonda just once. Uh, been to Outlaw Dundee a number of times, and yep. Wheat Sport was my Sunday night home track. We would go up through there 
Homer. We'd get off uh, I eighty one. We'd go from I was south of Binghamton. Yeah. So we'd go up to Homer, and then we'd go up through the lakes up okay. to Skinny Atlas and over. Okay. There was a chicken barbecue I stand. I knew we were heading to food. food. There was a chicken barbecue stand in Homer. It was the best chicken barbecue ever. Wow. To this day, ever. Really? T- number That's one a, on the number list. Number one on the list. So good. And we'd go up through there, and oh my gosh, it was so good. We'd sit there at picnic tables, and, and then you just get the whole weed sport vibe. And then you get the weed sport, and they had Hoffman hot dogs. Oh, oh. man, I'll tell you what. We were living right. King of the West, Petaluma, IRA Dirt Track. They're at the Plymouth Dirt Track in Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> and Angel Park, the historic Angel Park Love on Angel Sunday. Park. So, um, great, great weekend of racing coming up tonight. Uh, and I know the sprint cars, but tonight, Tuesday night, you've got the high limit sprint cars out at um, out at Wayne County. Yeah, ASA Super Late Models oh, at yeah. North Wilkesboro. North Wilkesboro. Okay, Beaver Dam on Dirt Vision, and then I'm going to be with the kids out at uh, Millbridge, Millbridge at Dirt Vision as well. It's Tuesday night. Wow. You're going to need multi screens on a Tuesday night to follow along with all the action. Of course, sprint car fans, we know where you're dialed in. We get that. But uh, there, there's, there, there, I think this, we're at such an awesome spot because there's just he's so much out there. Yeah. Um, I was, I was talking to, I was, I was talking to Scott Trailer last week. He does, he's the race, the, the racing boys yeah. out there. And you know, this pay per view explosion, and when it ties into the NASCAR garage. I think in that NASCAR garage, there is so much respect for Kyle Larson. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it is the pay-per-view explosion because yeah. these mechanics, these crew chiefs, they, they sit down on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night and they plop down the TV and there's Kyle Larson in a late model, or Kyle Larson in a sprint car yeah. uh, wearing everybody out. Yeah, and a modified. And a modified, <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's just like, and I think, that, I, I think that the pay-per-view, I think there's been so many things to it and I know we're still, we're always, we're always going to debate everything. Okay, but I just think it's really, really neat this era we're in now, where tonight everybody can watch. If you want to watch wing sprint cars, you can watch wing sprint cars. Last night it was dirt late models. Yeah. Last night the the Lucas Oil Series was racing a, a rained out event. Last night was dirt late models. Tonight it's wing sprint cars, super late models. This ASA tour and the return of North Wilkesboro to kick yeah. off All Star Week. It's like my gosh. It's like. I always tell I, when 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 people when people are like, well, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. I'm like, why do you subscribe to Dish or Directv or whatever yeah. you're whatever you're you know, whatever you're connected to? Because there's so much good on our on our pay per view streaming services. There We're really just is. really fortunate. So tonight and then uh, and then the rest of the weekend, it's going to be great. And speaking of great, uh, this past uh, we or this week on our Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit Television program, Spencer Baston mm. had a really good visit with Spencer. Up in the uh, great state of um, Pennsylvania, we talked ice cream, we talked brisket, we talked apples, and one other food item. Interesting. Yes, exactly. We got it all covered. A little, little racing? We got it all covered. There was some racing, and we also talked wedding planning. Oh, I was wondering engaged. about that, yes. Yes, he got engaged, too. So all kinds of stuff. You can find that Rev TV in Canada, Wednesday night at 8.30, Mav TV. Friday at 12.30. You can get your Wing Nation gear at www.shopwingnation.com. That's shopwingnation.com. If you're going out to Wayne County Speedway tonight, you can get it there. Sky will be there with the Tom Book Motorsports uh, Justin Peck team. Uh, I'm not sure where they're headed. They're probably, tough to say, I think they'll probably do Sharon and uh, and uh, Attica uh, this weekend. Um, they don't sell them with the World of Outlaws, but they'll be around. Uh, you, you, go to Wayne County tonight and just get your Wing Nation gear. <laughs> That's it. Or you can go to shopwingnation.com. We're very active on Twitter, on Facebook. We have a YouTube page. If you want to just go back and watch old episodes or old interviews, we've got all of that as well. So good stuff and really good stuff today with Dave Blaney yeah. and Chad Kavanaugh. Man, good, good fun conversation. It really was. Yeah, really good stuff. That's for sure. She is Aaron Evernham. I am Steve Post, and we thank you for joining us this time here on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.